Hello everyone, my name is Nuvola and welcome to another video. Today's video is an automatic storage system which stores up to 32 different items all automatically sorted and of which 8 are in bulk storage like this using a light indicator to show you how much you've got left. Also there's a lot of space for manual storage upstairs which I tend to decorate a little bit. I'll show you at the end of the video what I made of it. Without further ado, let's get into the build. Let's go! On screen you can see the layout of the build. It's 31 blocks long and 17 blocks wide. And we're gonna start off by digging out all of these holes, which should in the end be 5 blocks deep. The other holes are 1 block deep, and this is where we'll create a floor out of spruce planks and stripped spruce wood. In the 5 block deep holes we'll create the bulk storage units. Okay, let's head on and make one of these bulk storage units by first making a strip spruce pillar on the sides and some stone bricks next to those. They should be one block inward. After that, place four double chests facing the front on this spot and place four redstone lamps right next to them. On the other side, you want to face hoppers into these double chests on the side, one on top of those. And then we'll create the light system, which will indicate how much is left. First, box in these chests using some stone bricks. Just like this. Then, Place a comparator on this spot facing towards the chests and place a block, a solid block behind it. Place a redstone repeater next to it, a block next to that and a redstone dust in front of it. For the second lamp, place a comparator on a block right here, place a solid block behind it, a repeater next to that a solid block in front of the repeater and then we make a U shape like this and place two redstone dust right here. We want to block off the connection between these two redstone dusts so place a solid block right here and then for the third level we're placing a comparator right here. Place a solid block behind it, a redstone repeater next to that a block in front of that repeater and a redstone dust on this spot. Again, you can see that it connects and you want to break that connection. So for the final level, you actually want to repeat this process one more time by placing a comparator, a repeater and two redstone dust in these spots and break off the connection using a block right here. That's it and make sure you check if it works before moving on to the other boxes. You can close it off using some spruce slabs and be sure to put a torch inside, otherwise mobs might spawn in here. You can check if it works by putting some blocks inside of these chests one by one and also taking them out again to make sure that the lights turn off. As you can see here, it works. And once you've done one of these boxes and make sure that it works, you can do all other boxes as well. Eight in total. Now you want to create a way downstairs because we're going to work on the basement for now. Start by creating a staircase. Make sure that you light everything up because otherwise mobs might spawn. We'll then create archways in between the stripped spruce pillars using some spruce stairs and a spruce trapdoor. You want to do this at each pillar all the way to the back. Then in each corner you can hang a lantern from a spruce fence and you can fill in the floor using spruce planks and stripped spruce wood. 
in the end it should look a little bit like this this is just my style you can do this any way you like we will now start with the ground floor storage start by placing stripped spruce pillars of five blocks high with stone bricks next to them in between these stone bricks you want to place chests four blocks high so in the end you should have 12 chests in between these stone bricks go to the back and place three upside down stairs above these chests so you can still open them and then place hoppers behind the chests facing into them there is also a hopper coming from below from the bulk storage create a hopper tower just like this next to the three you already made and place a row of hoppers on top of them After that, you want to create a stone brick structure like this, in which we are going to make the automatic sorter. Place a redstone repeater and a redstone torch on these spots. Place a redstone comparator on top, with three redstone dust behind it. You should end up with this, and this is going to filter out the exact items you need at this chest. You want to create this system behind every chest. And once you've done that, grab an extra hopper which faces into this top comparator. After you've done this for one of these boxes, you want to do this for all the other boxes as well. So that's 8 times 4. That means that in total you can sort out 32 items. Now we have all of these chests, but how are we gonna get everything in there? You wanna grab packed ice and honey blocks. Using this packed ice, you want to create a line on which items can slide very fast in front of these top hoppers. Behind it, on top of these hoppers, you want to create a line of honey blocks. Items that will slide on top of this ice will stick to the honey blocks and therefore get sucked in by the hoppers. I will demonstrate this later on in the video. Time to choose which items you want to sort out. As you can see, I chose to store my wood, my food, my mob drops and some bamboo and slime into this automatic sorting system. Eight of these hoppers at the back go down to your bulk storage. I already made sure that all of the hoppers are containing the right items to make sure that only the item that you see in front gets filtered down into this chest. In this hopper I want to store my cobblestone because this goes down to the bulk storage. To make sure that it only stores cobblestone you want to add four single items to the last four spots in this top hopper. Then you want to add a full stack of the item you want to store in the first spot of the hopper. The hopper will give off a redstone signal which reaches all the way to the back. This gets picked up by the redstone repeater which goes on which then turns off the redstone torch in front of it unlocking the hopper going down. As soon as the redstone signal that's put out by the hopper is too weak to reach the end of the three redstone dusts it will switch off the redstone repeater and thereby turn on the redstone torch and thus make sure that the system will stop filtering through items. If you've done this correctly then it should end up on 41 blocks inside each hopper. Now how do we get the items on top of the ice? We're going to create a dropper elevator. Place down some stone blocks right here with a double chest on top. Next to this double chest you want to create a tower of droppers all the way up to the level of the packed ice. Back down you want to place a hopper below the double chest facing into the dropper. Behind the hopper place a solid block, then place a redstone comparator facing into that block, 
place a block behind it, place a redstone dust, another block next to it, a redstone repeater, a redstone dust, and then place an observer facing this redstone dust. Right here. We now need to power all the droppers. So you want to place an observer facing into the redstone dust with a redstone dust on top of it. Then place an observer again facing into the redstone dust and repeat this up to the fifth level in this case. It should look like this in the end. So this is how we get things up there, but if for some reason an item isn't filtered through in the system, we also need to have an overflow chest. So at the other side, place down a double chest as well, and place hoppers facing into it from the top. Connect these hoppers to the packed ice. We need to make sure that the items stick to the honey, so we need to create a water flow which flows straight into the honey blocks. This is why we need to create a bend like this. Make sure that you create a channel using some stone blocks. In the end, it should look like this. To make sure that the items flow along the ice, we need to create some water streams. Using signs, you can make sure that the water doesn't stop flowing. At the corners, make sure that you place signs at the block in front of the corner and then from the corner on you create a new water stream. Do this all the way to the end. On top of the dropper elevator place some blocks above it to make sure that the items stay inside of the water stream. Now let's test it out. I've grabbed some slime balls, some wheat and some mangrove wood to check if the system is working. Put your items into the input chest and as you can see the dropper elevator is working and it's dropping the items into the water flow. The slime balls go all the way to the end and as you can see they get picked up by the hopper which should only filter out the slime balls. You can also see that the mangrove wood is being picked up at the place where the mangrove wood should be picked up. And the same goes for the wheat. As you can see here, sometimes an item doesn't get picked up and it will flow all the way to the end. Actually, over here it gets stuck behind some stone bricks. So we need to replace these stone bricks by honey blocks. This is why it is so important to test your system before moving on. You don't want to figure this out when you are done with your build. Test it out with the remaining blocks and maybe add a block which shouldn't be picked up by the system to make sure that it works. It looks like it's working now. And actually, that's it. Your automatic sorting system is now complete. It's time to start decorating your build. For the decoration, you want to start off with stripped spruce pillars of six blocks high. You can see on the layout for the foundation where these pillars need to be. To make these pillars look a little bit sturdier, use a stripped spruce wood and a spruce stairs. Fill in the walls using stone bricks, natural stone and andesite blocks. And create windows on the side using spruce fences. For the first floor, one block below where you connected the beams for the ground level, place an upside down spruce stair with a spruce log on top. And on top of that spruce log, place another six logs on the sides of the building. After that, using spruce slabs, make your way up to the middle of the roof and connect both sides of the roof using spruce slabs alternated with double spruce trap doors. Do this all the way around and you should end up with something that looks exactly like this. To give the foundation an even sturdier look, we're going to add some spruce trapdoors 
at the pillars right here. Do this all alongside the build, on both sides. Should end up like this. And of course, don't forget to place the spruce wood and the spruce stair on this corner as well. Time to make the arches on which the walls from the second floor will rest. Using spruce stairs and a spruce trapdoor, fill in these three spaces. For the five block wide spaces, place spruce stairs with a spruce wood on top. Then spruce stairs against those and a spruce trapdoor in the middle. Also place some spruce trapdoors on the spruce wood right here to give it a more detailed look. You want to repeat this all along the build on both sides. Next up, fill in the walls at the side using stripped oak wood and some oak planks scattered around for a more detailed look. At the side of the build, place two spruce columns and fill in the walls using stripped oak and some oak planks leaving space for windows of 3x3. Three three. The one in the middle should be one block higher than the ones on the sides. Next up we are going to create some windows on the sides of the building. Starting with the small window over here, place a spruce trapdoor with a leaf on top, some oak trapdoors on the side as window shutters. Place white stained glass panes as the windows, a spruce fence gate with a campfire on top and make sure that you extinguish this fast otherwise your building might just burn down. For some extra detail you can put some spruce signs alongside the leaf to make it look like a placeholder. The three white windows are actually pretty much the same, using some white stained glass and some oak trapdoors. Place spruce trapdoors below the window with a spruce slab in between. Place some leaves on top and some spruce signs alongside it. And don't forget your spruce fence gates and the campfires on top. You now want to repeat this along all of the windows on both sides of the build. Now let's work on the entrance. Use spruce stairs and spruce slabs to create a roof entrance. It should connect just below the middle window and it should have this shape. Finish the entrance design using some spruce trapdoors and some upside down spruce stairs. Using some spruce fences you can actually finish the entrance. Next up are the bay windows at the side of the build. As you can see, I'm placing down grass blocks here because I want to place some flowers. But you can also place some leaf blocks if you don't have grass blocks available. And you want to repeat this at the other windows on both sides of the build. For the middle bay window you might need to fiddle around a little bit with the entrance roof. And 
now let's start working on the inside. Fill in the ceiling of the hall using stone bricks. And at the place of the stripped spruce pillars, you want to create archways using spruce stairs and spruce trapdoors. Next to these archways on both sides, you want to place spruce fences with lanterns hanging from them. After that, fill in the side walls and create a stairway up. Make sure you light everything up to make sure that no mobs will spawn inside of your build. Time to fill in the roof using deep slate brick and deep slate tiled slabs. Fill in the roof. On top of the roof, alternate stacked and single spruce slabs all along the top of the build. We now want to create some extra detail on the roof by creating some dormers. Using stripped oak, make a five block wide window with a spruce roof on top. These should align with the windows on the side of your building. I kind of messed this one up, so let me try that again a little bit more slowly. Hopefully it's easy enough to follow. Don't forget to finish off the details with a spruce stair, spruce slab behind it, a trapdoor behind that. You want to create four of these dormers on each side of the build. Don't forget the lanterns and you can create a chimney as well. Once you have built four of these dormers and a chimney, you can actually mirror it to the other side. Should look like this in the end. It's then time for the interior. Fill in the ceiling using spruce slabs to make sure that you don't see the outside roof. Once you've done that, create some spruce pillars to indicate your sections and create a walkway using spruce planks along the middle of the build. Fill in the floor using stone bricks and create walls out of stripped oak to wall off different sections of your manual storage, which will be on this level. I will not show you how to create each section by itself, because this is all up to your own taste. I will just show you how I fill them in and maybe give you some inspiration. I always like to create a little bit of a crafting corner in the beginning. And after that, I give each section sort of a theme. So here I have the skulk section. On the other side I've got the nether section. I then got the redstone section over here. And this is where I store all of my ores. The geode section which also holds my calcite. This is where I keep all of my saplings. This is where I keep all of my tools. And on this side, I keep all of my armor and my weapons. And then finally, this is where my bed is and where I always like to start or log off uh, from my world. And one final remark, don't forget to detail the outside of your build using some leaves and some lanterns. 
Anyway, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this build. Like if you did, subscribe if you want to see more. And I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers everyone.